Well, it's become more apparent that the sugar shakes are going to become more important down here in Australia now that the Varroa mite has turned up with a vengeance. Luckily, it's a fair few thousand k's away from us here in South Oz, but I'm figuring it's a good opportunity to get more diligent about our monitoring. We've already been monitoring for these jolly little buggers, but here we go now. We've got to get a bit more serious because they're only, I don't know, whatever it is, several thousand miles away instead of a couple of countries away. I thought I'd walk you through a little bit of what we're doing. I managed to find myself a white pot, which is a rather interesting exercise. I went around most of Loxton looking for a white pot. Somehow or other, I was in the jolly, I don't know what we'd call it, we'd call it the variety store, I guess. And this was one of their display pots that I said, could I have that? Because that'd be really helpful. And they went around and didn't figure out. They didn't know how much it was worth because it wasn't on their system, but bless them, they sold it to me anyway. And so we've got ourselves some sugar, some pure icing sugar so we can do a sugar shake. Now this is a little bit nicer to the bees. There is some conversation in the bee world as to how totally effective it is, but from what I can read and research that I've done, there's no way to be 100% removing all the mites from the bees that you collect anyway. So it's all just a numbers game. And the boys that I've listened to talk that have already been through this more than once, will tell you that if you find a mite, you're, you know, you're probably gonna have to get some issues going on. So if you find 10 mites, well then you've really got issues happening. So I'm praying just right now today, we don't find any mites to show you, but you know, stranger things have happened. And for all you regular viewers out there, you'd be shocked to learn that a bloke actually went down the shop and bought his own measuring cups for this project. How shocked would that be? And so I've actually got some measuring cups in my wife's kitchen that belong to me. So I'm not sure where that stands in this whole system that we've created of me thieving her things. So next time I flog something, I could say it's a trade for a measuring cup she didn't really want. We've got a half a cup, which apparently is meant to be about 300 bees in a half a cup, which is, I personally haven't sat down and counted them, but maybe we could, I don't know, depends how bored we want to get. And then we've got our tablespoon. So we're going to get a couple of tablespoons of sugar and a cup of bees. Then, Mr. Slack that I am, you can make your own sugar shake machine, but I thought since the world's already been sugar shaking for a while, I thought I'd just buy one. So this is the, this is your little sugar shake one that we've got. We've got a new one out the cupboard just for you, so you can look like we're all nice and clean. Got a little basket that you can tip your bees in. And it's got a little line, line for a 200 or 300 bees. I thought these, these seemed to be quite good. Of course, you can make your own, get a couple of jars and hook the lids together and you want a little bit of th three mil mesh or thereabouts. Can be slightly bigger as long as, the, as long as the mites can fall through it and the bees can't, that's pretty average. The only other thing I was just thinking, I haven't actually got my water here. So we need a little pot of water so we can tip the, tip the bees in that to see whether the mites are in here or not in a minute. If you want to get some hessian bags, just go around and knock on the door of some roasting coffee bean man and he'll probably have some hessian bags that he wants to get rid of. You never, never know if you never, never go. Now the go with these little varroa mites is you've got to get to the brood box because the little darlings, they like to lay their eggs in the brood and then the poor little jolly larvae bees get sucked. And I was listening to the guy talking the other day and he was sort of saying about the fact that the varroa actually sucks the fat cells out of the bees. That's how they live. I mean, I tell you what, there, if all else fails down here in Oz and we have nothing else going for us, maybe we could get um, the varroa mite liposuction. That could work. You know, could you imagine that? You wouldn't have to go to the hospital. You could just get a bucket full of varroa mites and stick them on your tummy. <laughs> that might work good for me. I get little that. That'd be that. That'd be. I might make a fortune. Nah. <laughs> Now we'll just pop the lid here a bit, give them a little bit of smoke under the lid. They're saying that it's going to cost us somewhere between $50 and $80 a hive to keep the treatments up when we get into this mite problem properly. So that's going to get interesting. And I was reading some reports around the rest of the globe and it's like somewhere between 50 to 70% losses that we're looking at having until we get the wild colonies and the all the stuff in the rest of the environment sorted out. So hopefully all of us beekeepers that love our bees and are, are gonna go through some hard times and we can all just work together and you know, let's not get too excited as we all get going through the same mess together. I don't know how it's all gonna pan out. I feel a little bit like I'm in basic training and I haven't even got to the war yet, but 
Anyway, if you go through the training, I guess you're going to learn how to shoot the gun before you, well, you've got to find the enemy before you can shoot the gun, I guess. So these girls are sort of wintering, so they're not real hectic, which is good. Super off the, out the way. Pop it apart first, didn't I? <laughs> that would be sensible. Ooh. There we go. Good morning, ladies. How are we today? Now these darling little mites, they just love to breed on the brood. So they, like I was saying earlier, they lay their eggs on the little larvae. And so you want to be getting into the middle of your brood box and finding out where your nurse bees are, because they're going to be the ones that are probably more than likely going to have some mites on them if you've got mites. So we want to find out where the, where the middle of the hive is, where the brood is. Well, where the brood is, it doesn't necessarily, it's usually in the middle of the hive because it's sort of winter here or just the end of winter, fairly early spring. Of course, you're not going to be able to find the mites that are inside the jolly sealed cell, but if there's mites in here, they'll be on the nurse bees more than likely than anywhere else. So we're just going to lift out this frame to give ourselves a bit of room. Ooh, there's a bit of honey store for you. Oh, you girls have done a good job, look at you. Shake you off a bit. Now you're like, what's going on? <laughs> We're all nice and warm in here, Mr. Deco. Let's have a look if we can't find some brood. Oh, oh, there we are. Look at that, he's like doing a good job. So if you can find some larvae in here that hasn't actually been capped yet, that's the ideal frame, because then you're gonna get more nurse bees that are feeding that larvae, of course, which is what we've got here. So we've got some uncapped larvae on both sides of this. Now the go is, of course, you don't want to be jolly sugar shaking your queen because it's probably not going to do her a hell of a lot of good. <laughs> Mind you, it doesn't, the sugar shake, the idea of the sugar shake is that you're not actually going to kill any bees, but I would suggest it would be an advantageous idea not to have your queen. So you scan over here, have a bit of a look to see whether your queen's on your frame. And of course, but that's never 100% accurate anyway. What I like to do, I've got myself a nice white container and I just shake my bees into that, it's like this. And the other, the other cool part about that is you get to double check that you don't scoop your queen up. You get all the field bees that are in here as well at the minute and they'll usually scoot away and fly off and do whatever they do and you, get, you just get more percentage of nurse bees left in this pot. So it serves a double purpose. You've got the chance to look for your queen and you've also got less worker bees. So you've got more nurse bees that you can test. But of course, they're not impressed to see us. <laughs> we might as well do two frames because I mean, that gives you a nice, oh, that's a beautiful frame. Maybe we should breed from this queen as well. She's doing them. Look at that. <laughs> Have a look at that. There's no room left to lay anymore. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Now, of course, down here in Oz, like I say, we're in the early stages of all this excitement. But you see here where the drone cone is, apparently the bloody Varroa might reckon drones are the most fabulous thing to breed on because their gestation period's a little bit longer and obviously they're a little bit bigger so they have more fat for them to suck onto. So apparently they can lay an extra few eggs in your drone cone. I'm too early into this experiment to find out exactly what you should do with your drone cone, but there is some research that suggests that you can rear a few more drones, like get the queen to lay more drone cells and then you can take those out and kill them and hopefully get the mite numbers reduced. But the jury's still out as far as I can read. And I'm, like I said, I am not gonna recommend to do any of that just yet. I figure if you go out there and you promote growing more drones and then you miscalculate, you're gonna make more mess than solve. <laughs> but that's only my opinion. Well, I think that's upset enough, enough of our bees. Look at them, they're not impressed as I wouldn't be either if I just got shaken out of bed. I have enough trouble with the alarm clock. Not that I have an alarm clock anymore because I'm so old and weird, I'm usually awake at four o'clock and going, oh, time I actually get out of bed, I'm nearly exhausted. <laughs> We've got the girls in our pot. And as you can see, the field bees have sort of dissipated a little bit. Perhaps a good thought is not to leave your mixing cups in the jolly place where you shake your bees but anyway not that it really matters right now we're just going to double check that the queen's not in here give it a bit of a roll around make sure we can't see her that also gets rid of a few more of the workers i think we're pretty safe i didn't see her before so right now the go is we get a special little pot that the ladies have attacked <laughs> and we'll put that up on the top here where should we put that so you can see it shall i put it there 
Now don't forget when you're buying your icing sugar, it has to just be pure sugar. You don't want to get the ones that's got all the flour and I don't know, whatever that stuff is that, that's a bit more glug. So you're not allowed to use that apparently. I don't actually know why other than the fact that maybe the flour and the bees don't like each other. But I'm just going on the fact that I'm 20 years behind the ball game here. So I'm just going to run with whatever has been told from the, from the people that have done this before me. I'm just trying to open this silly bag without it falling on the floor. The other time I did this, you open it and the bloody icing sugar and crap's all over the ground. It's not ideal. Failed. <laughs> right, here we are. Right, so we're going to just pop some sugar in our pot. Hopefully it's not too grainy. There's two tablespoons and a little smidgen. And then we're just going to rattle the bees to the corner. We're just going to get our little half a cup. And we're going to pop them in there. Like that. And tip the little girls in. Stick our lid on. If we can get the lid on without messing up the thread, that'd be good. And they're like going, Woo, look out, it's a bloody merry-go-round. They feel dizzy, I reckon, in there, the poor little suckers. And we're just going to let that sit there for a little bit. All the little gals are not impressed with us. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Couple of days, they said. <laughs> I guess the only upside I can think of at the minute about having this Varroa incursion is that perhaps we'll get to spend more time in the bee yard. I don't know whether that's gonna be good or bad, but we'll find out real soon. The other, only other thing I was thinking too is that the rest of the world survived somehow, so Shit, we're pretty a resilient mob down here in Australia, so surely we'll survive as well. Rest of my brood inspection while I'm here. Otherwise, you're only gonna have to come back and do it another time anyway. We'll just make sure we haven't got any other nasty business going on. It's gonna be very important, everybody that's involved with beekeeping or hobby beekeeping, whether you've got one hive or a hundred hives, you, we're all gonna be in this together. I think we're really just gonna have to go with the advice we get from the professionals that are gonna talk about how we're gonna control this because there is a little bit of sort of, there's some natural methods to do this. There's lots of um, conversations going around. And I think being that it's in the early days, if we can all just do as we are told, I guess would be the right way to look at it. Because if we lose this fight, you know, instead of losing 300 bees in, a, in an alcohol wash, which is one of the ways to do this, you're gonna lose the whole hive because the mites will win. Apparently that's what I've read. Anybody I've talked to that's played this game before, if you're not treating for the mites and not monitoring, the bees lose and the mites win because the mites live longer than bees. It's kind of this curve, like when the, when the bees are coming up, obviously they're coming out of spring where we are now, they're coming up, they're breeding, they're breeding and they're breeding and the mites are breeding as well. And it's like, I guess the mites are here, the bees are there and they're keeping in front. But then when you get into the, like later in summer and the bees start to come back down and they chill out, the mites are still going up. So there's this point about here at sort of late summer where the bees are starting to wind down the amount that have, they've got in their hive and the mites are still breeding up. And so by the time you get through winter, you, you've basically lost the fight. And so that's something we want to avoid. And we're all just gonna, I don't know, I'm still new at this too. We're all in this together and let's, luckily, there's probably one upside to being in Australia and being the last place that these little buggers turned up at. We've got a lot of research and development and people we can listen to that have done this already. So, Randy Oliver, if you wanna, if you wanna watch some stuff about Varroa mites and cheer yourself up no end, go and check out some of his stuff. Now we'll just chip our spare bees back in the box. Everybody's not happy. <laughs> Rightio, so we've waited for a minute. I think they nicknamed them ghost bees when you get to this point. Anyway, we've got them nicely covered and you gotta rattle them around and they don't get too bloody angry with them because you're not gonna get, well, you don't wanna go to all this trouble to use the sugar to do the test and then you beat them to death. Now, that's not really ideal. So we're gonna shake the sugar off the bees and into the lid. And then when we open this, we should have our sugar in our lid and our bees are still in here. There's still some sugar in here though, so hang on a minute. I might do that a little bit more violently. Trouble is, of course, when you've gone onto this a bit, sometimes it gets a bit damp and stuff gets stuck here. Just keep an eye on where you're up to. Right, OK, 
Cool. So now we've got our icing sugar in our lid and our bees are still in here. We can take this off. I just like to double check that you've got most of your sugar off and in here. Look at that, we even managed to get a drone. <laughs> we'll tip the ladies back in their home. Don't think they were happy. The girls are all saying, what the hell happened to you? Where have you been? You've gone white. Gosh, you look like you've been, had a shock. They'd all be licking each other clean. Woohoo. <laughs> anyway, the idea is that we're gonna find out that they're, oh, they're trying, they're, they're having so much fun, they're jumping in the icing sugar all by themselves. <laughs> Since we're in the backyard, I thought I'd bring myself a glass. Because <laughs> now we've got to dissolve our sugar. This is the part where I don't want to find anything. Because it's like, oh man. I was just thinking, looking here at this jolly mystery. I remember the first time I came across fowl brood and you're like, holy mackerel, and you're not 100% sure what's going on. And then when you've seen it a few times, it's pretty straightforward and you know, ah oh, yeah, these are the conditions and that's what it looks like and that's a spotty hole and there's a bump there and the girls are looking a bit dishabled. Well, I'm not looking forward to it, but I'm assuming when I've jolly done this enough and found enough mites, I'll know exactly what I'm looking for. But according to all the videos and the books and the research that I've done, so far so good. Well, I think that's a negative result, which is good. We're going to have to bring some paper towel with us so we can keep this jolly thing dry. Otherwise, we're going to end up with an awful circus, aren't we? And we'll just pop our ladies all back together. It's all right, chicks. I don't think I'm going to enjoy this project any more than you. Well, I guess this means this is the new normal down here in Oz. Unless there's, we have some miracle and we actually managed to jolly eradicate the little suckers where they have been confined to. But the bad thought in my mind is it's almost swarming season and I don't know what that means, but... Anyway, I'm hoping for the best and planning for the worst. I think that's where I'm at. Thanks to all our Patreon supporters and all you guys for clicking and liking and subscribing and sharing and hell, I reckon if there's ever a time in Australia where we need to all come together as one and make this a fight to the death and hold the Varroa mite, one would hope. Oh. There we go to the next one. Do -do -do.